It's hard for me to put into words just how much the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series shaped my early adolescence. Alongside the other driving forces in my life at that time, comics, music, any film starring Jet Li, skateboarding offered a much needed escape from the humdrum of growing up in the north of England. A social sport that removed the team element that had plagued my early experiences of football or rugby, it influenced the way I dressed, the way I talked, the music I listened to, and the friends I clung on to. And it all stemmed from my love of the Tony Hawk's games. A great equaliser, the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater franchise unified the sports game playing cool kids with the slightly awkward moshers such as myself. And within that offered a sort of validation. At this point in the early 2000s, I was still reading comics, but I did so with a sense of guilt. Nowadays, big budget superhero movies dominate our box offices and pop culture, and it's easy to forget that not so long ago, comic books were a social badge of dishonour. And while the other lads at my school were out playing football or sampling their first tins of lager, I was in my bedroom poring over the latest issue of Uncanny X-Men and feeling rather silly for enjoying it so much. But suddenly, there arrived these games that were bursting with street cred and anarchistic attitude, yet made reference to decidedly uncool things like Star Wars, Doom, and, uh, Shrek? Oh, hello there! But most importantly to me, my beloved Marvel superheroes. Hey everyone, welcome back to Panels to Pixels. My name is Josh, and this is a needlessly in-depth history of Marvel characters in the Tony Hawk series of games. The first thing that's important to understand is that from around the year 2000 until as recently as 2017, Activision, the publisher of the Tony Hawk's franchise, held the exclusive worldwide publishing rights to several Marvel properties, including flagship characters such as Spider-Man, the X-Men and many others. In 2000, Neversoft, the primary developer of the Tony Hawk series up until 2008, were developing a Spider-Man game for the PlayStation 1, using the Pro Skater game engine. The release of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 that same year could only mean one thing crossover potential. And that's why, upon gaining 100% completion in career mode with a created skater, players can unlock Spidey as a playable character. Utilising his spider-like agility and high-flying acrobatics, Spider-Man is perfectly suited to vert ramp skateboarding and is one of the best skaters in the game. The character model was borrowed directly from Neversoft's Spider-Man title and a special skeleton had to be used to allow for unique special tricks and poses. Additionally, and perhaps most surprisingly, Spidey is presented with four changeable outfits, more than any other skater in the game, and making the webhead the only character on this list to feature alternative costumes. We get the classic red and blue suit, the symbiote suit, the Mark 1 spider armour, and the Captain Universe costume from the pages of Amazing Spider-Man issue 329. A better selection of alternative suits than a certain PS4 exclusive title if you ask me, but that's another story. Aww. On top of all that, we get an unlockable Spider-Man skate video that can be accessed by earning gold medals in all three skate competitions with Spidey. As if seeing digitised video playing on my TV off a CD-ROM wasn't mind-blowing enough to my 10-year-old pea brain, this was Spider-Man? Skateboarding? I have seen the future, my friends, and it is tubular. In Spider-Man's own game, meanwhile, we get references to the Tony Hawk series with billboards advertising Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, footage of the game being played on a television in the Daily Bugle, and Spider-Man himself remarking, Tony Hawk, yeah, I skated with that guy. He's the best there is at what he does, but what he does is skateboarding? The next Marvel hero to get a cameo was everybody's favourite yellow spandex wearing, cigar chomping Canadian mutant himself. Wolverine in 2001's Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. In the Xbox, GameCube, PS2 and PC versions of the game, Wolverine is unlocked by completing all career goals and getting gold in all three competitions with two characters. In the Nintendo 64 and PS1 versions however, you must complete all of the gaps in the game. Despite being harder to unlock than Spidey in the previous game, Wolverine lacks the alternative costumes and unlockable skate video, but he does feature three special tricks and a totally badass deck graphic. His model in the game bears a resemblance to the unlockable classic suit used in 2003's X2 Wolverine's Revenge, particularly the elongated... Uh, what are they? Ears? Horns? What even is a Wolverine anyway? Aww, that's kind of cute. 
Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 boasts the distinction of being the highest rated PS2 game on Metacritic, and to me, alongside Pro Skater 2 represents the peak of the franchise in terms of gameplay, level design and soundtrack. While it was the second game that introduced me to the world of skateboarding and skate culture, it was the third game that cemented my love for it. The following years Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 was a respectable instalment with some unique gameplay elements, eschewing the timer based rounds and adopting a more explorative free skate style career mode. But this was the beginning of the end for the franchise, and there was a new dawn on the horizon. The last truly great game in the Tony Hawk's franchise before it became bogged down by jackass style stunts and Bam Margera levels of obnoxiousness was Tony Hawk's Underground in 2003. Building upon the formula of the previous games, Underground placed more focus on customization, requiring players to create a unique skater before embarking on a campaign that would see them go from backyard skater to bona fide pro. Upon completion of the story on beginner difficulty, players can unlock Iron Man as a selectable skater, making him the third and final Marvel character to appear in a Tony Hawk's game. Once again, the character is replete with special tricks themed around his comic book abilities, and features a neat hoverboard that you can really imagine Tony Stark having tucked away in his lab somewhere. Activision had actually produced an Iron Man video game the year before, with the invincible Iron Man for the Game Boy Advance. It's possible that his inclusion as an unlockable skater was to tie into this game, although what you may not know, because neither did I until I started researching this video, is that before the poorly received Iron Man movie game was being developed by Sega, Activision had their own title in the works for the Armored Avenger from as early as 2003. Sadly the game was cancelled, but that's a story for another video. You know, one thing that strikes me about Iron Man and Wolverine's appearances in these games is that their character models are so much nicer than anything we ever got in any official Marvel video games of the time. I think this speaks to the high quality of the franchise and the work of Neversoft, and it's a real shame that they never worked on another superhero title after Spider-Man. Besides the legally ambiguous inclusion of Spidey in 1989's Revenge of Shinobi, the Tony Hawk series represents the only time that Marvel characters have been allowed to make cameos in other video game franchises. These games and their inclusion of these characters offer a unique distillation of a time when both comics and alternative subcultures were becoming the mainstream. With the fuse lit on the comic book movie boom, it would only be a few years until both superheroes and skateboarding belong to the masses. But for 12 year old me, watching Wolverine heel flip down a 15 set of stairs, it couldn't get any better than this. Thank you for watching, if you like this video then why not give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Panels to Pixels, and don't forget to give that bell icon a little ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Also you can now support the channel on Patreon by clicking the link on screen or going to patreon.com slash panels to pixels, and I will see you in the next video, bye bye.